Jared Schuster has his best start of the year for the Atlanta Braves to help them win a series over the Mariners. Could there be some other Braves pitching prospects who are ready to get a shot in the rotation? We'll discuss that on this Miners Monday episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Amastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at bravestoday.com. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Always enjoy hearing from our listeners and trying to make this show the best that it can possibly be. For you, if you're new on YouTube, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're watching there, hit that thumbs up button to help support the show. And I can't thank you enough for all of your support on the channel. We're up over 5,000 subscribers on YouTube now. It's really just incredible. Thank you so much for those who make Lockdown Braves your first listen of each and every day. Thank you so much for letting me know in the comments section and on Twitter as well. It really does mean a lot to me to know that you enjoy listening. And again, shout out to all my everydayers out there. Continue to see those in the comments as well. Love hearing from you there. We're going to talk about what happened over the weekend. The Braves do get a series win over the Seattle Mariners. A great performance from Jared Schuster. Matt Olson starting to heat up. Ronald Acuna Jr. continuing to do what he's done all year. And please, no more bullpen games. We'll discuss that as well. Then we'll get into our Miners Monday segment where the Braves have some pitching prospects who had some good weeks and perhaps could be knocking on the door of getting an opportunity. So we'll discuss that later in the podcast as well. Then set you up for another big series coming up against the Dodgers. Well, let's start with the weekend a recap. It was a series win over the Mariners, a bit up and down, a good game one, a bad game two, and then finishing on a high note on Sunday. Great to see them win some Sunday day games this year. That's been a nice turnaround, but still a little bit of up and down. You're not seeing that consistent, you know, performance from the Atlanta Braves, which you can't, you know, get it every day, but we just haven't seen them go on a, consistent run here lately of having back-to-back really good performances so again well they're playing really good teams right now really good competition so to be more of expected but you'd like to see them get on more of a roll playing solid you know offensively defensively pitching just not getting that a lot right now and maybe some of that has to do with some of the bullpen games which again we'll talk about the offense wasn't great but that Mariners pitching staff is really good, and I think they're they're all young, or a lot of them are really young. I think they're just going to get even better. So that Mariners pitching staff is one to watch. I think they could be one of the best in baseball pretty soon, if not this year. Uh, so, again, held down the Braves' offense a lot in this series. But as far as the uh, Braves' pitching goes, you had Bryce Elder, a bullpen game, and Jared Schuster in this series, and you come out with two wins – pair of rookies and Elder and Schuster put together some really good performances. We know Elder's been great all year long. He was really good for six innings on Friday night, ran into some trouble in the seventh inning, left a couple of sinkers over the middle of the plate that got hit hard. His ERA now shot up over two. Uh, joking there, obviously, he's been fantastic all season long for the Braves. And you now look at Bryce Elder's body of work as a major league pitcher, 18 starts, he has made one relief appearances, 106.1 innings pitched, a 2.62 ERA, a 1.19 whip. It's not a small sample size that we're working with anymore when it comes to Bryce Elder. And if you take out his first three starts from last season, the beginning of last season, and just take it from when he came back up and was really put back in the rotation, yes, those were some hand-picked games against the Nationals and the Marlins, but still, you go from then – to now and you just take those numbers you're talking about an ace level type of pitcher here now is this who he is or or is there some regression coming that the stuff would tell you and the advanced analytics would tell you that there's some regression coming at some point i don't think he's going to be a sub three era pitcher his entire career but perhaps it's going to be even better than i thought it would be i thought he'd be a solid fourth or fifth starter and you know would pitch for a while in the big leagues because i trusted his stuff trusted his 
work ethic from watching him back at Texas and just the mentality that he has on the mound, but he's been even better than that. And, you know, it's great to see for the Braves. It's been much needed with the rotation the way that it is. But I think, you know, any any fan who looks at the numbers and just the stuff of, of uh, Bryce Elder would tell you there's likely some regression coming at some point, but it's been huge, the contributions they've gotten from him so far this season. Speaking of huge contributions, what Jared Schuster did on Sunday, he had that bullpen game on Saturday, which was just quite a disaster, and then you run the risk of throwing Schuster back out there the next day and blowing up your bullpen again, but was not the case. He went six innings, one hit, one walk, did hit a batter, one run, a solo home run, seven strikeouts, his first career win, his best start at the major league level. I mean, it's exactly what the Braves needed. I mean, it couldn't have gotten a better performance out of Jared Schuster, saving that bullpen, going into a big series with the Dodgers and the Phillies right after that. Again, it, it was really risky business for the Braves to push back Charlie Morton, start Jared Schuster after a bullpen game on Saturday. You could have really just torn up the bullpen going into that Dodgers series, but not the case. Schuster gives you six solid innings, and now you got to think he has plenty of confidence after what he did, not just on Sunday, but I think you combine that with what he did against Texas as well, which is a fine start for somebody who's your fourth or fifth starter. I think hopefully this is building confidence in Jared Schuster. Just three combined walks in those last two starts. I mentioned it. What was really you know, plaguing him at the beginning of the season when it's not like him was all the walks, and he's done a much better job of that his last two outings. He's looked more like that guy from spring training who is getting in a rhythm, working fast, throwing strikes, getting ahead of hitters. So when he's doing that, as we saw on Sunday, he can still be a really good and effective pitcher. So great signs for Jared Schuster. Eight of 19 or eight whiffs on 19 pitches with his slider, five whiffs on 14 pitches. Uh, or 14 swings against his changeup. So those are his two, you know, go-to pitches, put-away pitches, uh, but need him to lock up one of those rotation spots. Hopefully we're seeing that now. Like I said, an encouraging start in Texas. He follows that up with an even better start at home against the Mariners. So hopefully he's getting on a roll, getting more confident, getting more acclimated to the major league level because the Braves need him in that rotation right now with all of their injuries. On the flip side of that, no more bullpen games. We just it, it can't happen anymore. I understand sometimes out of necessity, you got to throw out a bullpen game. The Braves, you know, just suddenly lost two of their best starters in the rotation. So I understand maybe that first bullpen game, maybe even a second one, but we got to stop them. They're they're not good, and it's not just the fact that you can't win those games. The first two they had bullpen was was fine. That was not the reason they lost those games. For me, it's the effect that it has really before and after the bullpen games. That's why it was so big that Schuster did what he did on Sunday because you know now you can go back to those guys that you used on Saturday. You can use them on Monday if you want to, but you'd probably still like to try to avoid those guys if you can, even on Monday. And then leading up to that bullpen game, you want to try to avoid using those guys because you know you need them for a bullpen game. So it's not necessarily the bullpen game itself, even though this last one was Pretty bad. Tonkin's been good all year, but just didn't have it. And that's also the risk you run when you do a bullpen game. You never know who's going to be on or off that night when they come out of the bullpen. And Tonkin was just clearly off for the Braves on Saturday. But again, for me, it's more so what it means before and after that bullpen game as you try to avoid those guys leading into a bullpen game. And then you try to stay away from them after you use them as well to not overwork them. So hopefully we're done with bullpen games. We'll see what happens. They're going to need a starter On Thursday, Dylan Dodd would be in line to pitch that game. He last pitched on May 20th. Michael Soroka last pitched on May 17th. So I don't know if you'd hold him out that long until Thursday. I think they probably still want to see him get a couple more good starts at AAA under his belt. And then Alan Winans as well. He's been great at AAA all year, a 298 ERA and nine starts and a 1.06 whip. But he just pitched on Sunday, so he wouldn't be available come Thursday, and they'd have to make room on the 40-man roster for him. But either way, I'm done with the bullpen games. Let's get one of these young kids up, see what they can do. Like I said, hopefully Schuster has locked down that four spot in the rotation now, and you can just leave him there. Call up Dodd, give him another opportunity. If Soroka has a couple of good starts coming up and Dodd's not working out, 
Then you give Soroka a chance. Maybe Alan Winans, he keeps pitching like he has. He gets an opportunity. But I think there's three guys there that you could potentially use, give them a shot in that rotation, do away with the bullpens. Now, the, the flip side of that is who do you – who do you take out of this bullpen right now? I know a lot of people are down on the bullpen, but you still look at these guys and it's like, who are you going to get rid of? Rid of? And that's what I asked on Twitter before recording this. And outside of really an IL stint, putting somebody in the IL, it's really hard to choose who you would get rid of because hardly any of these guys have options. I think AJ Minter the only one that has an option. And yeah, maybe it would be a good idea to send him down, give him a break and let him get right before you bring him back up. You're still going to need to bring him back up at some point. Plus, that would leave you with Lucas Lick. He is the only lefty in the bullpen. I don't think the Braves want to do that. So it's just not, you know, there aren't an, there's not an obvious option right now in the Braves bullpen to just get rid of because that's what would have to happen. Like I said, only Minter has options. Dylan Lee does, but he's already on the IEL. You can get rid of Tonkin. I don't think they're ready to give up on Yates or Joe Jimenez with what they have invested into those two guys, but they'd probably be at the you know, bottom of the barrel of that list right now as well. But I just don't think the Braves are ready to pull the plug there. So I think that's part of why they're going with these bullpen games is because they don't want to lose this depth that they have in the bullpen because you can't just option one of these guys. You'd have to DFA him. Um, getting back to the weekend, Matt Olson heating up at the plate is great to see. Five hits on the weekend, three doubles, two home runs. So all five of his hits went for extra bases. He had eight hits on the week and – it was really just that last game in Texas where they faced Evaldi, who's been on quite a heater here lately, that he didn't look good. Outside of that one game last week, I thought we saw some really encouraging signs from Matt Olson. You know, that was the only game that he had multiple strikeouts last week, and he had two games this past week where he didn't strike out at all. The guy still has a 916 OPS, as, you know, as much as he has struggled at the plate to get hits. Again, the guy still hits for power, and he takes his walks. So good to see him start hitting or heating back up, though, getting those extra base hits. Acuna and Olsen's first inning collaboration is one of the best things going in baseball right now. Acuna let off each game with a hit, and Matt Olsen drove him in every single time. So love seeing that. Acuna's first inning numbers are just insane at this point. 22 hits and 42 at-bats for Acuna to begin the season. 15 runs scored in the first inning this year. He's currently riding an 11 game hit streak. I, I mean, I don't, I know I don't, I haven't talked a lot about Acuna here. We talk about him on every postcast. I just, I don't know what else to say about him at this point. The guy is the best player on the planet at the moment. But another very encouraging thing for me on the weekend, Rysel Iglesias on Sunday is the most dominant outing that we've seen from him so far this year. He fell behind 3 0 uh, to Rodriguez to begin his outing, but then came back, got him to ground out to shortstop, and then was just dominant. The next two batters, fastball to 97. That changeup looked beautiful, diving away from Kelnick for the strikeout. So really loved what I saw from Rysel Iglesias. The Braves need him to be dominant. They need some dominant arms in that bullpen. I know Nick Anderson has been that. I know he gave up the home run on Sunday, but for the most part, he has been that. But the Braves need some more dominant arms. They need A.J. Mentor to be A.J. Mentor. Iglesias start looking like himself. And then along with Nick Anderson and what he's done. And then all of a sudden you have three guys who you really trust out there in those final three innings. So great to see that from Iglesias. All right, next we'll get into our minor league recap where, like I said, the Braves have had some pitchers down there who are impressing and perhaps deserve a chance. Could be knocking on the door here pretty soon at the major league level. We'll talk about those here next. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage. Look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The Braves host the Dodgers starting on Monday night at 7.20 p.m. Eastern. It's the two best teams in the National League. And, oh, by the way, that former first baseman, Freddie Freeman, is coming back to town as well. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. 
be a full week on the podcast. I will be at the SEC baseball tournament a lot this week as well, but still plan to bring you a podcast each and every day here on Lockdown Braves. We'll also have the postcast with me and Grant McCauley after every game this week as well. So make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you subscribe to Lockdown Sports Atlanta as well on YouTube. You get the video version of the postcast or you get the audio version in your Lockdown Braves podcast feed. All right, getting into our minor league recap, Jared Schuster, two starts with the Braves this last week, as we talked about earlier, 11 innings, four hits, three walks, four earned, 10 strikeouts. Really good week for him. Owen Murphy got his first professional win this past week, five innings, three hits, no walks, one earned, a solo home run, five strikeouts. Great to see from him. But J.R. Ritchie still on the injured list. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. We got some information on this now. Mark Bowman reported that it's an elbow injury, and the Braves say they're still evaluating it. So, hate to hear that. I had just traded for him in my fantasy baseball league, so I apologize. This is on me, uh, but hopefully J.R. Ritchie is okay. A.J. smith Shaver, his first start at AAA went really well. I got to watch uh, all of this outing, really, and was just impressed. He didn't look overmatched at all against uh, these AAA hitters. Five innings, four hits, two walks, two earned. Five strikeouts, gave up his first run of the year in this game. It was a home run from the top prospect in all of baseball and Jordan Walker. So, again, a very impressive outing from A.J. smith Shaver at the AAA level. Braden Shoemake got to go down and start playing baseball again. Two games, went three for nine with two doubles, a walk, and two strikeouts. Spencer Schwellenbach also got his first professional win this past week. Five innings, two hits, two walks, no earned, four strikeouts for him. Uh, Darius Vine, still no clue where he is at the moment. I've sent out tweets to the world. I don't know where he is, but hopefully he's back soon. Ambioris Tavares, two for 25, one double, one triple, two walks, 14 strikeouts. I know, I know, I said I'm not going to worry about this kid until we see what happens in his final two months, but it has been a rough go for Ambioris so far uh, in his first full season of professional baseball. Dylan Dodd, four innings, three hits, two walks, no earned, two strikeouts. Got pulled a little bit early in this one. Braves said they wanted to manage his workload, keep him around 75 pitches, so they pulled him early. Again, I think he's going to start on Thursday, uh, but we will see. That's when he'll be in line to pitch again. Nacho Ignacio Alvarez, seven for 19 after a slow week last week, picks it back up this week, had a double and his first home run of the year on Sunday. One walk, just one walk for him this past week, very low number. Uh, but still just two strikeouts. So putting the ball in play a lot. Now you're seeing a little bit of that power coming as well. So great to see from my guy, Nacho Alvarez. Michael Soroka, four and two-thirds, two hits, one walk, one earned, five strikeouts. I watched this one. I haven't watched all of them. I know he went six innings earlier in the year. It was a good start for him. But the ones I've seen this year, that was the best I've seen Soroka, particularly after that first inning. He really locked it in was in a groove, was blowing hitters. I saw him blow a hitter away with his fastball, forcing fastball up in the zone. Uh, that slider, obviously, is really good. So that was a very encouraging start for Soroka. Like I said, I think the Braves want to see maybe one or two more of those for him before they consider bringing him back up. And, you know, I get it. I want to see the return. But I understand the Braves being cautious with him and not wanting to bring him back up until they feel like he's there to stay and he's fully ready. So, I get it. I want to see him make that return, but I understand the Braves kind of slow playing it. All right, now going down to each level, we got a lot of really good performances from last week at every level, but Gwinnett, Chad Pender uh, just came in on a bender. Uh, four games, eight for 19, one double, two home runs. He has been absolutely incredible at Gwinnett so far. Forrest Wall has just been solid all year long. I've talked about him. I know there's not really a spot for him on the big league roster, but eight for 23, three doubles, one home run, two stolen bases this past week. I mean, he's a he's a real threat on the base pass. I, I don't know if he deserves an opportunity or needs one, but he has definitely done all that he can do. Eli White really as well at AAA. He didn't have his best week, but he's been great all season at AAA as well. Both of those guys have been. Hoy Park, seven for 22 walks or two doubles, a home run, three walks, and a stolen base. He's probably looking at the Charlie Culberson promotion and being like, what does a guy have to do uh, to sit on the bench at the major leagues? But he had a good week. Von Grissom as well, five for 17, two doubles, four walks to two strikeouts. Yomer Sanchez, six for 19, two doubles and three walks. So some really good uh, weeks for the hitters at Gwinnett. Some solid weeks for the pitchers as well. Grant Holmes, four innings, seven strikeouts. Did walk four, however, gave up a couple of earned runs. 
Alan Winans, 10 in the third innings, 10 hits, one walk, one earn, and seven strikeouts. Mentioned he may, may be knocking on the door of getting an opportunity. I think Tanner Gordon could as well at some point this year. Was really good at double-A to start the season. Got called up to triple-A. Had a rough first start, but it's gotten better each time. Is now his third start at triple-A, and it was really good. Five and two-thirds, four hits, one walk, two earn, and four strikeouts. And then Yaxel Rios. I know this is somebody a lot of people have been asking, you know, should he get a shot in the bullpen? Three innings this past week, no hits, did walk two, no earn runs, three strikeouts, and a save. You look at his numbers on the year, 0.92 ERA, 0.66 whip, 19 and two-thirds innings, 24 strikeouts to six walks. So, obviously, the numbers are there. I need to go back and watch this guy. I just haven't seen enough of him to see what kind of stuff he has. But certainly, he's pitching like somebody who perhaps deserves an opportunity at some point. Going down to Mississippi, Cal Conley had a big week, eight for 27 at the plate, two doubles, three stolen bases. However, no walks, seven strikeouts, not great there either. Drew Lugbauer, six for 19, two home runs. He's always bringing the power, is a Lugbauer. My second rhyme of the podcast, I'm going to stop there. Javier Valdez, four for 14 with a home run. Alan Rangel, five innings, two hits, three walks, one earned, seven strikeouts. Again, these pitching stats at, at AA in the Southern League, you got to take with a grain of salt, but Mississippi pitchers are getting it done this year. Domingo Gonzalez, three innings, no hits, did walk three, six strikeouts. Victor Vodnik, now I tweeted this one out this past week alone, three innings, one hit, no walks, no earned, six strikeouts. Very encouraging. The month of May, eight and a third innings, three hits, three walks, 12 strikeouts, and two saves for Victor Vodnik. As I've said many times, he has the stuff. It's just all about consistency. But he has been great in the month of May after some up and down performances in April. So hopefully Vodnik can keep it up. Maybe he'll get, get a move up to AAA and get an opportunity at some point this year as well. At Rome, Keyshawn Ogans had a huge week. Eight for 22, two doubles and three home runs. Also walked twice. Kevin Kilpatrick, I'm going to mention him every time I get an opportunity to. Uh, seven for 25, two doubles, one triple, two walks, two stolen bases, giving you a little bit of everything. Drake Baldwin, good power week as well. Five for 21, a double and three home runs with two walks. Good to see that from the Braves catching prospect. On the pitching side at Rome, uh, Roldy Munoz, uh, seven and two-thirds innings. He started a game uh, and came on in relief. Five hits, two walks, two earned, and seven strikeouts. Ian Meggi, uh, six and two-thirds, two hits, one walk, no earned, and five strikeouts. Sorry, I said that name wrong. Uh, Ian Mejia, uh, six and two-thirds, two hits, one walk, no earned, five strikeouts. Daniel Martinez, five and two-thirds, four hits, one walk, one earned, four strikeouts. And Luis Vargas, five innings, two hits, one walk, no earned, four strikeouts. Like I said, a lot of good pitching performances across the farm system this past week. Had some really good performances at Augusta as well. Justin Giannis, 8 for 23, scored seven runs this past week, a couple of doubles, five walks, and a stolen base. Bryson Morrell, 6 for 17, two walks, a triple, uh, two doubles, a triple, two walks, and four stolen bases. And Jeremy Celedonio, two home runs and seven runs batted in. And then on the pitching side, Jorge Bautista, four innings, two hits, no walks, no earned, six strikeouts, and a save. And then Cedric D. Grand Prix, he just continues to be on this list every single week. Six innings, five hits, two walks, no earn, six strikeouts. Off to an incredible season for the Braves. Seth Keller, four innings, two hits, one walk, one earn, six strikeouts. Did hit three batters, but another really solid outing for Seth Keller. Now that's your Braves minor league weekly report. It is MLB draft watch season, so I did want to just briefly touch on that as we get into the college postseason now. Like I said, I'm going to be at the SEC baseball tournament all week, get my eyes on a lot of these pitchers. Then we'll get the regionals, super regionals, college world series. So now is really the time if you're getting ready for the draft, you want to watch some of these college guys. Now's the time to do that because they're likely going to be on you know, ESPN where they're you know easily uh, watchable. So if you want to start watching some of these guys, here are some names to keep uh, an eye on. Paul Skeens, Chase Dolander, Hurston Walder, Rhett Lauder. All four of those guys are likely not going to be available for the Braves in this draft. Those are pretty clearly the top four college pitchers, and I'm only focusing on college pitchers in this episode. You look at that second tier of college pitchers, it's Jerron uh, Watts-Brown out of Oklahoma State. I saw him earlier in the year, was really impressed with him. Tanner Witt of Texas, been out with Tommy John, so you know the Braves. 
I like to take those guys who have already had Tommy John. He's working his way back now. So that'll be a big name to watch in the postseason because he was a first-round guy before the injury. Same can be said for Grant Taylor, who you won't see this postseason. He's out for the year. Uh, but a guy who was a first-round uh, – you know, had first-round uh, – Mox earlier in the season, then had the injury, so he's out for the year. But somebody to just think about for the Braves. Brandon Sproat's a guy I've loved out of Florida. You look at him one week, and he looks like the best pitcher in college baseball. You watch him another week, and he's given up six runs. So it's just consistency for him, but he has the stuff. He has three, maybe four-plus pitches. Will Sanders of South Carolina is a guy I've loved, but he has not gotten better this year, maybe somewhat reg regressed. Uh, a lot of these other guys – I haven't seen much of Alonzo Treadwell, UCLA, Jackson Baumeister, Baumeister from Florida State. Florida State's not making the postseason this year, which is the first time it's happened you know, since I was born. And even going back further than that, Hunter Owens out of Vanderbilt, maybe the top left-handed college uh, pitching prospect. And then Sean Sullivan out of Wake Forest. Can't count out the Braves taking one of those pitchers from Wake, Wake Forest. So those are some of the arms to watch that could be available for the Braves at that their first round pick, maybe even second round as well, as you start watching some of these college postseason games. But going to start doing a little bit of draft watch uh, on these Miners Monday episodes as well as we get near the draft, which will be this July. All right, next, I'll set you up for Monday's game between the Braves and the Dodgers. First time these two teams will meet this year, and they are doing so with the two best records in the National League. We'll discuss that next. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. I've been playing it all year long. I got to go check now to see which see what cards I won from this past week's tournaments. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun. Enjoyed doing it, winning these cards, trying to put a, the best team together, competing against other players to win better cards. And as you step up levels, you can win even more prizes than that. You can win game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, VIP experiences, all, all kinds of great stuff, again, depending on the level of competition. But I'm really enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. If you, will, if you think you will enjoy it, then make sure you go to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's S-O-R-A-R-E.com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash locked on to start playing today. Not much news to speak of on this Monday, but the Braves do start another big series. This one against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Again, these two teams come in with the two best records in the National League. It'll be Gavin Stone versus Charlie Morton on Monday night. Dodgers dealing with some issues in their rotation as well. So you're going to see a couple of young guys start in this series for the Dodgers. The Braves do have their pitching lined up in this one with Morton, uh, Strider, and Bryce Elder, their three best starters that they have available to them right now. So hopefully that gives the Braves a little bit of an edge, but Dodgers continue to turn out really good prospects. Gavin Stone, one of those, uh, 24 years old. He's only started one game so far this season. Didn't go well. Four innings, eight hits, two walks, four earned, and just one strikeout. At AAA this year, it's just been okay for him. 35 and two-thirds innings, 19 walks, 41 strikeouts, 4.04 ERA and a 1.26 whip. But last year, he really shot up the charts because he had a 1.48 ERA and a 1.12 whip across three levels leading into AAA with 168 strikeouts and 121 and two-thirds innings. So strikeouts haven't quite been there for him this year. Hopefully that continues on Monday. Mostly fastball changeup with the slider as well. So be uh, Braves interesting. Uh, be interesting to see the Braves get a look against him on Monday night, and then Charlie Morton, more of the same. Limit the walks, hit batters, home runs. What we talked about coming into the year, and what he's done a much better job of this season, and more swing and miss. Really, what we've seen over the past four starts for Charlie Morton has been that vintage Morton we're used to seeing, working deep into games, getting the strikeouts, getting those swings and misses. So hopefully that continues on Monday night, and the Braves can get a win to start this series. That game will start at 7.20 p.m. Eastern. Again, it's Charlie Morton versus Gavin Stone. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the XSXM app. Search word Braves. 
That would do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Thank you so much for making Locked On Braves your first listen of every day. And thank you again to all my everydayers out there. Let me know if you're an everydayer in the comment section below or you just got something you want to talk about. I try to get to every single one of those comments on every single video. And I do appreciate all the comments you leave on YouTube or on Twitter, which you can do at Locked On underscore Braves. And you can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Again, thanks for listening. Make sure that you subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.